Hey, welcome everyone to the Archicad User Monthly Webinar for March 2023. My name is Eric Fabro, and my special guest today is Carson Emde from Australia. How are you doing, Carson? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Um, it's early morning over here. It's about 7 a.m., but um, yeah, no, I'm doing good. Thank you. Good, good. Well, uh, I'm really glad that you'll be able to share some of your tips and tricks and, and uh, strategies for working with Twinmotion and Archicad uh, today. Let's make sure that everybody can see us and uh, see right now I have the, the screen just showing the Archicad user announcement um, with Carson and his work. Um, so please type into the questions area. Um, just let us know that you uh, um, can see us and also where you're calling in from. Uh, is always interesting. So I do see Kevin um, here, Tim. Oh, Tim Ball, nice to have you there, Rick Skorik. So Rick's from Tokyo, Tim is in the UK, and uh, Paul from Colorado, Bart, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Bart Klumij from Poland, Scott from Minneapolis, one of your countrymen, Andy Bunbury from Australia, you may know him, Ken Brooks, Stuart Blake. Okay, awesome, so everything's going. Um, and, uh, and I see, uh, interesting. So um, uh, Kevin Cabral says, I see you have trouble loading. I did too until I switched over to the new Apple Studio. So I'm not quite sure what he's referring to, trouble loading. Um, we're, I didn't think that we were live before the, um, uh, I said hello to all of you, but it's possible that the screen sharing was actually, you know, your, uh, Carson, you were having some problems with the loading the twin motion there. Um, yes, 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 yes. That's one thing. Every so often, twin motion doesn't behave as it should. Uh, but look, it's it's fairly stable. But like I said, I prepared some nice files and I tried to open that one file and it just wouldn't open. It opened last night perfectly, and I haven't mm -hmm. done anything last night. I was just sleeping. So there you go. That's that's computer. I've been long enough in the business to know that can happen and. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Yeah, so um, uh, so Doug Muir confirms, yep, you were live. So I just questioned Doug and for all of you who were on a few minutes ahead, uh, were you hearing us or just seeing uh, what was on the screen and were you seeing our webcams? Um, I was. Uh, that's okay, not a problem at all. Um, all right. It's, uh, anyway, so Karsten, um, I've been following your work for a while. I know, uh, you know, we're, Definitely out there in public in front of the Archicad community. You've got a YouTube channel and 12,000 subscribers or something like that. You've been sharing tips on modeling um, yes. and on twin motion, and you've developed some great visualization resources, uh, including a course on twin motion and some textures. Um, so tell us about your background, how you got into Archicad, and you know what do you do? Archicad? Yes, yes, yes. Um, that was a long time ago. Hard to remember, I was uh, first time introduced to Archicad in uh, 1989. That was, I think the worst one was 3.1. I somehow remember that point one. But anyway, so I was quite excited getting away from the drafting board. I was still doing pencil stuff. Um, and yeah, we were, I think we were one of the first ones. I'm from Switzerland, so we introduced, got introduced to Archicad quite early. And if I look back, you know, I was probably one of the first companies using Archicad at the time because everything was just new, you know, Autodesk came out and, you know, obviously River didn't exist, all this stuff. So, so that was quite exciting. I just went from there, you know, I kept going in that company for a while. Uh, early 90s, moved to Australia. I had a sales job here selling Archicad. Um, that was the reason I came over here. And, and just went from there. So, you know, kept going. And just uh, around 2002, two, three, I went into more to be a 3D digital artist. I really enjoyed the rendering part of Archicad. I think it came in with Archicad 4.5. Couldn't remember exactly, but um, yeah, that was even more exciting. I was sitting there and watching the lines go obviously very slow, you know, and it produced this pretty image with all those pixels and now oh, this is exciting and that, that got me and I think yeah that's why I went into away from drafting you know construction drawings and all that so yeah that's what we got now 2023 though 
close okay. to 20 years doing doing um, mainly modeling you know being an artist and uh, rendering and yeah at, at the moment i'm actually on a pc i was i was on a mac for a long time and because 3d studio max v-ray at the time was the market leader and um, it gave me no choice but i had to jump and uh, ship to the dark side to the pc you know uh, but looking back look that's just the way it was i had no choice i couldn't stay on the mac and i'm on, on a pc and look it's been good pcs are fine you know even so mac users don't think so but that's cool <laughs> it's always yeah. the same you know um yeah I've, now gone, I'm here. I've gone back and forth i i started on a mac used pc as my primary computer for about 10 years and then went back to the mac and uh yes yes, uh, yes. i also started with archicad in 1989 um at the end oh, of the right. year, november and it was like 3.41 or something like that yeah, so it's on the next, yeah probably 3.4 exactly <laughs> yeah so uh, anyway that uh dates us in in more ways than one uh, I know, I know. that's correct yeah but look it's it's also that's all of my background yeah it's, it's grown, grown up in switzerland now moved to australia you know using our for that for that long so right so yes. do you do any um design projects anymore um no, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm part I'm employed with Artero Interactive. That's a large animation studio in Sydney. Uh, we we do many large projects. You know, involved cities are usually involved with metro. We build metros on you know animations and all that. So it's all very large scale. Mm -hmm. and, but for myself, yeah, I do little uh, little projects on the sides. And yeah, like you mentioned, I, I love doing the modeling, YouTube modeling. Archicad. I just love modeling in Archicad. I think that's my passion. And yeah, obviously Twin Motion, you know, I've been using Twin Motion for almost three years now. And I find it very good designing because it's real time. You will see in a moment, you know, you, you're in Archicad and you link it to Twin Motion. And yeah, I love that you can sort of, it's not just getting a nice pretty picture of the end. I think you can use it as a design tool. Um, you will see and i think that's it's exciting and, it, and it's real time sort of like senior render where you you know you push the button you wait and then you change your light a bit darker you push the button you wait yeah it's just a good thing with real time you know you don't push buttons you slide them and you can see instant the, the yeah, feedback no, it's, it's, it's awesome so let me make you a presenter so you can share your screen oh, and yes. okay. then tell us um what we're going to be focusing on over the next uh, hour, hour and a half. Um, so uh, I know you're gonna be showing us some installation things and then some tips and tricks and some example projects, is that yes, right? Yes, yes, okay, so just quickly. So I tried to get sort of three 20 minutes periods going. So first I wanna show um, the Archicad link, quickly show the website where you can download the Data Smith plugin. And I'm just going from there, you know, in between I do some interior. All right, so I've made you a presenter, but you need to show your screen. Yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't done that yet. Let me show the screen, okay. And uh, let me know if you can see my screen now. Yes, we can, yep. All right, cool, yeah, then I just show some interior stuff. And the last 20 minutes, some tips and hints. Let, let's see how that goes. All right, look, I've got our kick open here. And by the way, for all of you who are on, feel free to type in questions into the questions area. Um, I will monitor them and I'll pass them along to Karsten at appropriate points. Um, if you're in the Archicad coaching program, I will be monitoring the Slack workspace in the um, for Archicad training in the coaching calls area. Um, so you can use that if you're a member of that program. Go ahead, Karsten. Okay, great. Thanks, Eric. Um, I'm in Archicad here and I will link it to Twinmotion in a minute, but you need a plugin for that. You've got to install it and it will turn up in in Archicad, I put it up here. And um, if you do this and you don't find it, you go to you know your toolbars. Uh, I think it's palettes, and you go all the way down here. See, so there's a data smith link, uh, which you know it won't it won't pop up straight away if you install it. You got to go down here and show it, and it'll pop up on the screen somewhere. And this is a PC. I just move it into the top here. So so this is my data smith link here. Just just bring it bring it separate so it floats so we can see it for yeah, now. Yeah, probably a good idea. Let's do this. There you go. Perfect. All right, good. And then we got the download link. Where is this here? All right, so that's download link. So this is Data Smith export for Archicad. 
and you just go on to motion.com you know and just put in this this here you just search for the plugin for archicad um, for twinmotion this gives you that website it's very simple you go through it you download for mac windows or for mac os about the plugin how to install you know this little video so it's it's quite nicely done some requirements and there you go bit of history so you do this you download that you install it preferably have archicad closed install it and then you open archicad and like i said then we get you know we get this um, uh, um direct link in archicad but make sure you turn it on down here okay so this is it and then um, in archicad i got two motion open i can see at the bottom here it says click here to import or create a data smith direct link so in Archicad now, to do this, I need to go into a 3D view because Twinmotion only takes 3D information. So let me go into 3D now. Okay, so for now I've got this um, just simple three-story building. And if I want to link this over here, I can just go and click this little link. It says here, synchronize with direct link. So I'm clicking this and Probably not much happens here because before you do this, you have to actually go import here and you got to tell to Motion which Archicad file you got open. So you can see it's automatically finding my Archicad file and just leave this as default here. The one thing I would change is to collapse by material. Okay, so before you do that, so it, it found a file there. How would you choose yes. a different file? You click on that? I don't even have to click on it. I can't. You know, it just shows me what it found. So if, you wanted, to choose a, if you wanted to choose a different file, then you have to open a different Archicad file. So, okay, so it only picks what you got open. Later, of course, it will tell you, hey, you got the wrong Archicad file open. I can't find this. Okay, but so it looks time. to see what version, what Archicad file is open, and then it looks for the Twin Motion direct link. File. Yes. It's okay. all, it's quite clever actually. I don't even have to look for it. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and, and what if you have two versions of ARCHICAD open and uh, is there, is that cause That's issue? a very good question. I haven't even tried that. I have a feeling it probably shows both. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. I'll answer that. All right, so you go and open that, collapse by material, and then import? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, collapse by material is just, I'll explain a bit later that it will just collapse anything that has the same material in Archicad into one object into Emotion. It sort of, you know, just optimizes the scene. So let me import this. And you see at the top, uh, bottom left, you can see now it's here. And if we go back to Archicad and we try this again. So I'm clicking here, synchronize. And you just got to wait a little bit. And I can go back to Archicad. Yeah, it does it automatically. There you go. So it's a direct link and it's just processing this now. Okay, so you can't see anything usually because it places it accordingly to where your Archicad files um, is, you know, compared to the origin. So all you do is you go over here, open the scene graph. I'm clicking on this. And I hit F on my keyboard, which is sort of, you know, it zooms into what I've selected. This is the whole of my project. I could go even further. Let me let me go to class and hit F again. It will zoom in closer. There you go. Okay, okay so, so I've got when you click on one of those line items, it automatically zooms to it. Okay. Yeah, you have to you have to click here and you have to click F on your keyboard. Okay. Or you what right click F S, did you say? F. F for friend. Oh Frank, okay. Yes. Um yeah, or you right, uh, you uh, right click on it, and you can see here zoom to selection. Ah, so that's fine too. Okay, so I've got this now. Let me go back to Archicad. You can see at the moment I've got purely the model and the site. So I want to quickly explain how I work or what it's a good idea to work because it depends on what you see in 3D. So I've got a couple of different layer sets. Let me go to building site and furniture. So you can see I, I 
turn the furniture on and let me click direct link again and we go back to Trimotion. All right, so I've got the furniture in there too now. Okay, so what I do is I replace furniture in Trimotion because of the quality and but I keep my Archicad furniture first you know for placement so it's like a placeholder so at any time I can now place an object um, let me just as example do this quick let me go in here and you know place this here now usually this is quite a simple example I don't really need a placeholder there but for internal maybe for you know depending on how big how much space you have you might really want to keep the sofa quickly because you have a exact size of the table and um, I'm just going to op uh, objects here and let me go living room yeah living room will do I'm sure there's some chairs in there and let me go down here so any chair I could take here or let me go to tables because I think tables has yeah has some ready-made one so I can just take this let me just take this as an example. So you move and you click and you move over here. So you could just place this here and you can see and place it in the same spot. That's just an example for us for today. So you do this around and you, you want to you turn off turn off the uh, Archicad um, original object. How would you do that? So okay, you don't so this, this, this is what you have to do now. You would have to turn it off again in the Archicad and relink it. Or oh, that's another option because what happened is I'll show you because it does connect everything. Let me click this one and I move this a bit away. See, they're all connected as one object now. So you, there's, there's not a way to just turn uh, the visibility off because you- Oh, I can turn it off. I, you see down here, I can turn it off, but then I will have some other pieces left over probably from the leg. Uh, the, because yeah, see, there's, there's a seat, I click on it, and I turn it. material uh, or surface. Yes. Right yeah. Look at this. The, the, I mean, it didn't take long. You can do that. That's fine. You can do work that too. That's fine. Um, for this purpose, just um, put it back on. So that, that's one thing I would do. Um, sometimes there is another way to do it. You can just export Archicad furniture. And I'll show you that. So I can go here. And instead of doing a direct link, there's another option. I could say save as, I'm in 3D, and I can save it as a data smith file. Okay, let me just do this. And then we go here and we place this into our webinar. Let me just place this in twin motion. Save. All right, so that's quickly done so I'm going back to my actually no let me do now um, building and site and we will now direct link again so you're waiting for it to refresh the connection and that's uh, right. come on let me try again so the idea okay. is that so now, yeah. Okay, so what you can see down here, that's why it's called import. We can import this now separate. I can now go, instead of a direct link, I can go to geometry, I uh, open, and we can go to the um, furniture I just exported. So let me go here to twin motion and assets. I'm sure it's this one. Open, import. Um, I usually use it. Does we see? I, I always do my own material, but let's just say for the purpose you see material. That's okay. Does the same material mean that it'll if you've changed the the material or the surface in Twin Motion that it'll use the updated version? Yes. Yes. So. That's what it does, yes. So you will see now what happened is let me turn off the main direct link. And I've got this little. Thing. So you can see this is the same thing now, but it's separate to my direct link. So if I 
go here, turn this little chair on. Now I've got the option with one click to turn off the furniture. Hmm. That's that's more like I do work, but some people don't want to use export and import. That's fair enough. So I showed you both options. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes, this allows and, you to replace the furniture with better versions. And probably another thing that people use it for would be landscaping because you might place the trees in ARCHICAD yes. and replace them with better versions. Yes, exactly. So, and by the way, just to, just as a quick note, one of the things you're doing there is you're changing um, your view. Uh, or actually, you're changing layers in this case to um, to say just show the furniture or whatever it whatever it is. You can save any view, whatever you have in the 3D window, based on marquee layers and other other filters that you use. Um, then that becomes something you can export at any time. So if you have a saved view, you can export it and um, you know, let's say have the newest version of the landscaping or the furniture, et cetera. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So so you know it's it's just uh, it's just a layer, like you know, if you guys know I'm using RPK, I just do layer combinations. So that's why they got this on top for me to export. Uh, or directly. So yeah, let's just do this. Let me direct link this again here. Because again, see those those hops obviously they're placeholders. So let me go back. I think that's one of the strengths to it in motion. You probably know yourself the archicads. So it's plants. I do have to use the word terrible. Um, they, they're purely for for me. They're there for you know showing something in size. Uh, but the otherwise, you know, the trees are probably not too bad. But yeah, I just find this you know it's so outdated. That's probably the word for for now. Okay, you can see I obviously have the trees in there now. And the same thing. Let me let me add some trees here. So we go to vegetation landscape trees. And uh, what tree do I do? There's, there's quite a lot of um, options. Um, let me just pick one. So these are standard part of the twin motion environment there, like yes. yes, yes, yes. So you click and move, and you just put that tree in here. Okay, so you, again, you can use as a placeholder and just move it in the exact same spot. So I think that is quite handy doing this from Archicad because it is easy in Archicad from the top view, clicking in some of the plants, tree locations. Um, you maybe have site plan with exact tree location. So that's that's really nice. And then you just use them as placeholders. Um, and yeah. So can you deselect it so we see it without the outline? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay, and you can so see how much more realistic it is compared to the the Archicad. Yeah, let me um, actually go and turn it on and off. So yeah, and, and it, look at this. There's lots of options, and you can obviously it's over here, and you can see on the left here that's the age of the tree. You know, you you, you can play with it. And that's you can animate that, of course, and you can also change the leaves, color, bark tint. There's just a lot more option to to actually make it look look nice and presentable. So I, I think that is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Any questions, maybe? Maybe just a quick question before I continue. So that's sort of the main thing. If you directly link your Archicad file, you go into Twin Motion. Those are usually the options I do, you know, with, with furniture, um, cars. Cars, yeah, cars not that important, you just place them, but the trees I think it's important for location. And I'll continue just a little bit in a moment about textures, but yeah, just in case somebody has sort of an urgent. So there's a question from <clears throat> question from Tim Ball from the UK. <clears throat> um, he said, I, I place trees in Archicad so I can get the species and sizes correct. Is it easy to change the trees to match? Yes, yes. Unfortunately, they, yeah, yeah, exactly. They, unfortunately, they don't. They, you just have to resize them. Yes. So you saw Tim just how he made it bigger or smaller. You can choose from whichever one of these uh, species is most appropriate, yes. and you can move it right on top of the Archicad tree. And then 
if you have all the trees in as a separate import, um, then you can just turn them all off at once and just have the uh, replacement ones. Exactly. So I will, I'll do the same with the trees. I'll definitely export that separate for me. It is much easier to turn them off and on, um, you know, while I'm going around. And it's quite easy. I mean, you, you can just, you know, you could just go to here. Because this is selected, I could just keep clicking the tree. Let me zoom out a bit. I could just keep clicking the tree in. Okay. Of course, I've got something in the way. You see how it almost places my tree on top of the other tree. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, because it's a placeholder, it's a little bit more difficult to maybe um, get this exactly on top. Now, let me escape. You can also, if you have the correct size with one of them, let me move this over here. Let me select this one here. Maybe I should select it over here. So this one here, if you got, if let's just say this size is correct, you can just hold down shift and you can copy that over here, same size, and you can copy. There's an option of an instant or a copy. If you do an instant, it will change um, together. If I let me do an instant quickly. So if I now change the size of the tree, they both change, which is very handy. Let me undo this. And if you move again and make a copy, and instead of an instant, you make a real copy. And now I've changed that tree. It only changes this because it's actual copy and not an instant. So this again, I think it's very handy because many times you have maybe similar species or same, and they may be same size, but then you want to show all of them a bit higher or you know not as high, and you just select one of them, and they both change in size. Okay, so that's that's sort of the startup point. So a question, uh, Tim also mentions he's found it hard to place cars on sideways uh, sloping roads, sideways sloping. So if the, you have sloping roads, if you were to place a car um, here, is it uh, easy yeah, to I'm rotate sure. it in different axes? Uh, let me go and go to... You can do a search for car, right? Can you type in uh, the word car up in the search thing? Yes, yes. What I want to do is I want to. Where's my objects? I, it, everything is flat here. I need something that's not flat. Uh, there you go. Uh, all right. And let me make it make it a little bit more um, difficult. So let's just say it's like this. And like this. That's probably already meant, right? It's a bit extreme, but it doesn't matter. So let me go and get a car now. Um, By the way, can you just search on the in in uh, in the search bar up there for car or auto? I can. There you go. Okay. Cool. Well, and now you can you know just select the car. Let me take this one and move it over. So. Okay, there you go. So it is trying to do this obviously as good as it can. So I don't know what, um, this is not bad, but if you now start turning it, that's exactly the problem, okay? So it, there's not much you can do, but you have to sort of fiddle around, unfortunately. There you go. So it's not that easy, I agree, but you know, you don't have that too many times, I hope. So you see, that's what I'm, I'm doing, just using the rotate, rotate tool a lot, and you have to sort of. Okay, so it's not automatic, but but you can rotate no, it on any, any axis, and you can get it within 30 seconds or a minute, probably, to, to sit. Yeah, you look. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. You you watch this live, so that's what it does at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. one comment from Bart from Poland uh, looks like game development, not and he's not. Uh, now uh, Andy Bumbury from says, do they have Australian trees like eucalypts? Yes. Yes. Look, that's what happens now. Is I show you quickly. Let me go back to library. Materials. 
um, to no, don't want that. There we go. Mm -hmm. You screwed me up like that because you put in the car. Oh, there you go. I don't use search as long. All right, there you go. And um, the trees. Yeah, look, we only have those are the main trees here. Okay. Which has I don't think it has a Euclid. So what they got new night is um, they got Sketchfab. You could try and search, or you can search in Quixel Mega Scans, 3D plus. Um, have a look. Yeah, or we just let me just do. Uh, so you can import from other sources than the built-in. Yes, library. that's that's correct. So you can obviously, if you have a nice tree, you can obviously just like I import now the furniture. That's a data smith file, but you can import FBX or any other, you know, anything you find out there. You can just import. Yeah, it doesn't have any gum tree in in this library. And um, the other bit is maybe Sketchfab. We can try here gum tree. Okay. But I would just, if you can, we have, um, yeah, see, they, they find, the searches are quite funny. Sometimes they find stuff that doesn't relate at all, to be honest. But yeah, look, unfortunately, tree trees is a bit of a problem worldwide because it's impossible <laughs> for, for any software to put in all the species. There's thousands of worldwide. So if you don't find it here, yeah, you have to unfortunately go to resource elsewhere and go down here to the import button if you click import like i said you can import anything you want really mm -hmm. okay so um, <clears throat> there's a question from doug Muir. does the most recent twin motion run on the most recent mac silicon um and i know that uh one of our, our other clients uh, steve nickel has been going back and forth with graphisoft tech support and with um a twin motion tech support. So I'll summarize and then Steve, you can type in um, uh, an update. Uh, twin motion does have a preview version that uh, will run on the Mac Silicon native. Um, it may not be stable. It's, not, it's considered an early development version. Um, you could use that or you can use it in emulation mode. Um, and uh, so in other words, just run it as a standard uh, Intel based Mac software. Um, and use that until they have a native one. So it won't be quite as fast, but it will, it should be stable because Apple does a good job of emulating the um, earlier chips. Um, and so Steve, feel free to type in a comments on that. I know you're on the call, so. All right, he, yeah, Steve does want to talk. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Eric, that's they're really working hard on it to make this happen. Um, okay. Even I know the path tracer support is on the cards. So, right. yeah. So yeah. What, Daniel Wyckoff uh, wrote two things. One earlier, everyone using Twin Motion on a Mac needs to demand that Unity um, develop support for the 3D Space Mouse by 3D Connection, like they've done for the PC. So that's a great tool. I haven't really used it, but for maneuvering around the, the model and maneuvering your elements, you know, moving them um, in a, you know, more intuitive, let's say, uh, hand-friendly way. And apparently they haven't done it for the Mac. Uh, but he also says, um, if you use the gravity tool, objects will drop to the surface be uh, below in a parallel manner. So that, that might make the ramp um, issue uh, or the sloping roadway not have a problem if you use the gravity tool to place it? Um, I haven't used it a lot. I just was playing around with it because, yeah, it's not something you I use a lot. You show it's, us it's possible. Uh, I can have a quick look. I think it's this one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of those. I would have to check up on that because I do have a feeling the way the videos I watched, the gravity, I thought that it, it bounces a bit, but my, I might be wrong. My, my Can video you just one. delete that car and put, put a fresh car in there using the gravity tool? See if it. it um... Yeah, look, I have to look up on that, that gravity tool. I haven't used it. Okay. Like I said. All right. Yeah, so, so 
Tim Ball asks, can you change the limited number of background images? Obviously, we're seeing this urban view in the distance. Is there a way of... Yes, yes. So that's, that's a bit... Yes, I wanted to show you. So, it's in Mausch. Let me go. You can change that as... Um, first of all, I want to show you the location. So, here, um, let, let me go and place this now correctly and click in here. Let's go to Eric. San Francisco, okay. Um, well, okay, I'm in San Rafael, just north of San Francisco, if you want to do that, or you can do it in the city of San Francisco. How do you spell it? Uh, this is San Francisco okay. city. Yeah, the city is S-A-N, separate word, R-A-F-A-E-L, Raphael. There we go. Oh, no, that's in Argentina. R-A-F-A-E-L. <clears throat> No, it doesn't find it. Doesn't, it doesn't come that. It doesn't show. Interesting. So in yes, report, oh, there it is. There you go. This one. Mm -hmm. You're living in the water. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Right in the middle of the water. <laughs> okay. Look, this is good because now, now you, you just, just drag it somewhere into the town. This is just an example. You know, maybe in an oh, open. No, this is this is purely for the time of day is now correct, the north, you know, depending on oh, your... For, for the sun so calculation. So, see, again, that's a good thing now with, with real time. So you can obviously just move the time of day. You can say, this is July now. Um, what we got now, we got March. Let's go to to March. Um, there you go. It's dark at the moment because I'm at 8 o'clock. See how the, the city lighted up a bit? That's pretty cool. Let me go back up. So that's obviously all the north, you know, you change the north point. And that's what I mean with real time. So that is quite nice. Um sort of to see the effect on, on your um model. Now the background, there's a couple of backgrounds here. They're not too much, and you know, too many. I could just go to this one. But they added something new which is much nicer. So you go to uh, let me go here. We go to lighting, and they got now um, backdrop, or they got skylight HDR. So let me go to a backdrop. So for those of you who don't know, HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Image, um, which means that it it. Of course, all images have light and dark, but it has more nuance there. And it's uh, in this case, it's a dome that if you're inside of it, <clears throat> you can, you know, see, say the clouds look different as you look around. Now, you need to, of course, make that bigger <clears throat> so that it uh, is not like a encapsulating the building. It encapsulates our full view. Yes. So that's the dome over there. Let me go here. And you can create your own HDRI images um, if you have an open space. Like if you were building in an open space, you can create your own um, there. You can also buy them. Um, uh, you know, basically, if you were making your own, you just are using a tool that I don't know which tools are available, but you can just take a, pic a camera and just take shots going around in a circle and then I think going maybe over your head um, and it'll stitch it together in the tool and create this smooth thing. So here we have something much uh, less distracting. In other words, we see clouds. We do not see this funky urban scape. Yeah, Obviously, exactly. Yeah, the building, is, the building is isolated and maybe it does have context, so you're not going to see that, but you will see something more natural. Yeah, yeah. So this is now, and um, you can see it also has the option. It it matches the sunlight and HDR affects the lighting. So if I turn this off, you see the the shadows here get dark again. And let me turn this off too. So now we got the sun I had before moving around, but because I use this now, it uses the sun off the HDRI and now it affects the lighting. So what I could do is if I go back here, 
the sun, if I now go with the sun down a little bit, it doesn't do much. We probably should, you know, really go low because it's using the strength of the HDRI to lighten up the scene and it gives actually quite a nice light. You know, you almost sometimes rather use this to lighten up your scene, um, which is quite nice. Let me go back here again. So I can rotate obviously the backdrop and then it does rotate the sun because you can see the sun is somewhere there below. And there's lots, if I go here to go to library, um, you got lots to choose from, you know, you got skies here, low sun, mid afternoon, noon, you just click clear, cloudy, overcast, let me click here. There you go. And there's lots here. Some of them you have to download. You see it is here. All you have to do is you log into Epic Games. It's all free. It just needs to download because some of them are a bit bigger. And again, they could install everything onto your hard drive. It is just too big. So let me maybe go back. Uh, cloudy. I might have some. I don't have to download. Let me have a quick look. So um, can you combine this with, uh, you know, some other uh, like 3D images? I know one of the things Steve actually, uh, same Steve Nickel from Colorado uh, has used is some images of the neighboring mountains because they have, you know, mountainous area. And uh, it just yes, you would have to, like you just said, you would have to create your own image, like you said, stitch it together and apply it um, so that that could work you know it should work and then you have your background or you have to just um, it's like all the other softwares you have to just apply a texture to you know you just um, place a big background a flat sheet and you apply the texture to it as a background okay so, um, so a couple other things um, uh, can twin motion output video yes it can you can basically yes have the camera move from one position to another and cr create the images. Uh, interior lighting and textures would be something that would be good to do, just a quick review and how you would change textures. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Exactly. Let me do that quickly. Yeah, yeah. Just so that the, you know, doing an, uh, an image is fairly easy. So I'm going down here on the left, I click image and let me just move here as example and I just click an image here. So this is an image now which it's sort of a camera view. Let me move a bit closer, turn around, maybe like here, a bit back like this and yeah, click an image again. Oops, that was a bit too close to the leaf. Um, I just redraw. So I got two images now which they call the images but they are two camera views. So I click between them at any time. If you do animations, let me go back out video here let me go over here maybe like this for now um, again I click so that's my first video that's my first um, camera uh, location that's it now you just do a plus here and you move over here you go there and you redraw here and that's already it so if you go here, or you want to go a little bit closer like this, and you plus again, there you go. It's really simple. I, I find it, and all people that haven't used to most, of, of course, every learning learning a software is never easy, but they really try to make it fairly easy to, you know, get going with it. And, and I think that's play, Can you just hit play for this and just see what it what it does? There you go. Yeah, so again, that's the play bar moving and the, the camera position changing. Um, there you go. So, and then you can save that. You can you can say generate that with different settings, different lighting, etc. Yeah, of course, of course. Even in here, you, that you click, you click more, and then you get all the settings again. You know, with the lighting, I I can, you know, make it a bit dark, a bit light, or whatever you need to do. Uh, white balance, you know, if it's a bit more winter, it's cold. If it gets more warm, it's sort of in summer. So yeah, now again, because of the feedback, it is is fairly easy. Okay. So, so let's look at the interiors yeah. and and the and the surface textures and lighting. Um, yeah, exactly. Let let me let me actually open another. Uh, I've got a, 
another file, an ARCHICAD file. Let me open another ARCHICAD file for this. Uh, okay, webinars. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. No save. And I'll get out of here. New scene. No save. No, all gone. So a couple of people have mentioned that they lost sound and then they had to go out of, go to webinar and then gone back in to get the sound. It's been uh, consistent for me. I've not had any issue hearing you or seeing the screen. Um, so it must be a local issue for, for the, I guess, Stan and, and uh, Steve. Um, Tim asks, what's the VR output like? So does it have, um, a way of exporting something that uh, a client can move around it? I have to say yes, and I have to say I haven't used it because, yeah, I just have never had the need to use it, but I know that people do use it. And let me go back here. If I go to, uh, yeah, if you do a video, let me do a video quickly. Well, I'm sure if you do a video, you can export an MP4 or a video file, but uh, what's yeah, yeah, that is yeah. VR. And, you know, like BIM Motion, or what is it? Yeah, BIM, BIM, what is it? What, what's our BIMX? BIMX from our Archicad, you can export your model to a form that a client can open up and move around. Not nearly as nice looking visually, but certainly, um, it gives them the ability to walk inside and look at wherever they want. So is there an equivalent for Twin Motion to be able to uh, hand that to a client where they can't edit it, but they can walk around? Yeah, what you can do is you can create a presentation that's that's in, inside Twin Motion, which um, let, me, let me open it. Let me get back to this. I need something in here. So let me quickly look at my file I've got here for the interior. And then I get back to this, okay? So, yeah. mm -hmm. all right. Look, I've got the I've got the file. You can see here. This is for clients that um, you can see. I didn't have to model much because it was purely mistake. Sorry. All good. Yeah, I I was just uh. Tim shared a link. I'm going to just uh, uh, respond so other people can see it. Um, he referred to an app called HDREYE, so HDRI, but it's spelled EYE app, creating HDRI with your phone. So it's a little video. Um, uh, I don't know how long it is, but it's a video on YouTube, and I'm sure it gives instructions, plus probably refers to. Um, you know the the app location so yeah cool cool that's good thanks for that um okay let's just quickly so let me just link this up to um twin motion so that's all new and i'm going here direct link and there you go import Okay, so you can see there's a couple of textures in Archicad here. They obviously come over into Trimotion. Um, again, from my perspective, because I'm a 3D digital artist, it might be different. Again, I pretty much replace them all into Trimotion. Some of the textures are okay in, in, uh, in Archicad and they're very usable, but then obviously you've got other ones that they just not usable. Um, so then you replace them into Trimotion. So let me go back here. Okay, one thing by the way, it, you can see right here, we had some lights coming over. That's in the new version now. So if you have some lights in placed in Archicad, where am I here? Then they come over into Twin Motion, which is quite handy because you can just move them around and adjust them. There you go. So I had, we go down here. So I did have some lights, you know, here you can see that's a light. Um, yeah, you know, that's that's a lamp. So because this is a lamp, 
and not just an object as a lamp. So, so this will come into motion as a light. For this purpose now, let me turn them off. And you can see this is the way this came in. So the textures came over, I had an archicad. Let me move in a little bit. While I'm in here, so there's a couple of things I like to mention. So you can see some of the items are missing. So I don't have a sink, I don't have, um, as example, the fridge. Okay, so in Archicad, I did not put them in because I couldn't really find the nice um, object that suited. So I just leave it open and then I do this uh, into motion, looking for a fridge into motion, and then just drag it in. But let's go back quickly to the um, material. So this came in, so if you've got this little picker here, material picker, let me click on the brick here as example. So that came in from Archicad. You could still change it and use it. So I could still say, make this brick a bit, you know, less white, or you, you change a slightly in color. So that's obviously possible. Or you replace it. You can also scale it if you want. You see here the scale, make the brick bigger and smaller. So that, that's all fine. But if you want to replace it, you simply just let me do that quickly. We go to the library materials and we go to bricks. And you got uh, a set here. And if you want to, you can replace it very quickly. Let me do this maybe. Yeah, some it's not exactly the same, but let me move this in. And yeah, see, sometimes they come in quite small, but you got scale, you just scale it up. There you go. Now, just quickly, I'm replace this here. If I go back to Archicad now, right? And let me direct link again, tell them do a direct link. So it does not replace this back to my white um, texture I had here. But you would have, if you want to, you can. You can go back here, in here, and you click, and you got a lot of options here. So you can see res reset transformation, materials on selection. So you can, if you want to, replace it back. So which is quite a nice option. Now, why is the uh, brick on the right look different than the brick on the left? Is it is it just the lighting, or um, one, did, it, did that change there uh, when you yeah, updated? They're two, they're two different objects. Two different uh, surfaces? Oh, they were the same surface in Archicad, but they, they're different in here. I must have had can you affect, uh, different... Can you affect it globally? Sorry? Can you affect the, the surface definition globally so that where you change that that uh, brick to a new type, can you make it affect all the ones that are have the same surface in Archicad? Yes, if it's if it's um, what happened is, see, I, I had probably a different name in the event quick look. You see, that's all internal, and that's yeah, it's a different name, material name. That should you know, I should have applied probably the same, but there was a reason probably I didn't. Of course, if okay. that's the same, remember it does combine into one object all the same materials in Archicad. Right. So that, okay. So how would you apply the? You know, you say, hey, I like this brick over on the left. How would you apply that to the other surface name on the right? Yes, yeah, so you just you, you just have to pick it again, and it turns up down here. So you click and you move it in there. There you go. So you literally so, drag and drop. Um, Yes, you drag and drop surfaces. Yes, yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, and again, you let me pick the floor. You can obviously, you know, start doing reflections here. You can see that's what I mean in real time. You know, it is it's a real time for you, or if you got the client around, you know, they can change this very quickly. You can change the. It's a very dark kitchen at the moment, so let me just go back. You uh, turned off the lights, I think. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's also it's very dark color. So let me go uh, because I wanted to actually. Yeah, that's better. I had I had the light setting different. There we go. What we got here? Let's make it a bit brighter. What we got outside? Yes. Oh, I noticed. Have a look. Yeah, I know what I have. There is um, exposure, auto exposure. There you go. It's not bad if you start off, it doesn't auto expose. Have a look. So, if I'm outside, it looks all right. If I go inside, it sort of adjusts automatically. Let me turn this off. So, that's what happened. Ah, so, 
Okay. And again, this is this is professionals turn that off because it doesn't look totally right for me. So if I go now in here, you know, it's just the same. It does not adjust automatically. Okay. So those are little settings. You learn them all in the course. Yeah. So yeah, so, let's 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 um talk a little bit about uh the course. So what you've been showing today is certainly been inspiring and uh, we'll continue you know we're only an hour in so we have more time to take questions yes, and yes. do things but um it i don't expect karsten that you could teach everybody enough to you know uh, in this short session to be proficient in twin motion so you have a course that you sell for uh, what, what 350 bucks or something like that um uh or 400 bucks? Um, yeah, 349. 349, okay. Um, and uh, that will give you the basic skill set to go from ArchiCAD to Twin Motion and create some nice images. How far do people get in, in that course? I mean, can someone yeah. get as far as they need for most most architects? Yes, yes. Just quickly, so at the moment we got the Eric Bobrook special, so it's only 249 to save $100. And yes, you see, that's why I call it the starter course, because what you get out of it is, you know, you, you definitely get, let me show you a couple of images, uh, mess this here. You already get quite far, I, I think. Um, let me have a look, I've got here, courses. So um, can one of you out in the audience just type in a question, how do I get the special deal on Karsten's course? Type that in and then I'll reply back with the link and you'll see that link there. Um, so that that uh, offer for a discount is uh, available for the next few days, I think till March 27th. Um, it's what you said you'd send a, a set up uh, Karsten. So, uh, check it out, you know, uh, we should take a look on the website as well, but there's a special link that'll give you that discount. Um, so those of you who are watching the recording later on, uh, you won't be able to get that discount, although who knows, maybe Carson will arrange something special with me um, to give you a deal, but this uh, special $100 off will be available for the, just the next few days. Yeah, uh, five days and um, yeah, no problem at all if you want to re re uh, arrange something else. Um, yeah, just quickly. So you see, that's the arcade model I used before. You can see, so, and then move away. So this, 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 after the start of the course, this is what you can do. You know, I don't, I said it, you can always do better. I think it looks nice, but for a prep, on a professional point, I would change some of the textures, you know, make that there's just a little bit more effort you put in as a 3D digital artist. But if you're an architect, you draw plans mainly, and you just want to do sort of, you know, get, for the client something else that looks a bit better than Archicad. So with the start of course, this, this is definitely what you can do. So um, I'll maybe show you another one. Let me have a look here. And if you go internally, again, so that's that's example. I see that's the one I had open at the moment. You know, that this is this. Um, so you can see, you know, that's, that's how we started up. And let me go over here. There you go. So that's the image I have here and here. So you see, I placed some lights. I maybe should do that quickly. I'm sure we got a bit more time because I want to actually show you how to place lights uh, in here. Let me go back. It's fairly simple. So I turned all the lights off that came in from Archicad. So you can go to the lights. And the way we work is, let me go with the exposure a bit down for now. You see the sunlight outside is still there. So what we do is now we put in an area light. I just move it in here and move it a bit up and we rotate that that way by 90. Okay, if it's, you can see the numbers there. If it's not exact, let me undo this. So I just go and hover over there, put in 90. Oops, hang on a second. Ooh, what happened? There we go. There's my lights. There we go. Yeah, I'm on the wrong one. So you go there. Oh, I lost, man. 
lost my number again. Well, let's just do this for now. So what you do is you move them in front of the windows. Okay, so let me go over here. That's just a quick example. And obviously down here you got the size of the lights. You see, there you go. And you got the length. Length is because I turned that is now up and down. And again, you get straight away feedback. So what you do is you make it a bit smaller. You don't want it too big like this. Maybe height wise, I put in two meters. There you go. And you move it roughly there. Now if you hit O on your keyboard, it toggles through different views, and that's the top view now. Sorry, you, you hit what on the keyboard? Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, that's it. Oh, yes. And then I've got a clipping plane here, so I can go and clip. I always have to go which way. There we go. All right, cool. So because it's still selected my light, so you can then, you see, you can move around the light a bit further. Um, I probably would have to clip it a bit more to see where the windows are. There they are. Cool. All right, that's that's just a bit easier. And then again, it's shift down, and I can just copy one. Oops, let me do that again. Didn't want to do it. All right, let's go back to O. Uh, with O, you just keep going back. Probably have to do some. Yes, it doesn't want to make a copy. That's why we're annoying at the moment. Okay, so what you do is obviously you keep placing them around. Can you just do copy and paste? No, <laughs> no, no, no copy and paste. Let me oh, add another can one. You, can you right click? Can you right click and say drag or copy? No, I just have to do it again. It's very odd. It, yeah, I got this number back again. Some, something happened. Uh, let me do 90. Just very quick one. Okay, so we'll chip down and I can copy. There you go. Maybe you see that's how I fix stuff sometimes, you know, it just redo it quickly. And because I did an instant again, so both of the lights will adjust. You know, you can't see, let me select both and you will see that just in size. You also got something called um, attenuation, a bit hard for me to say. So this is the extent how far the light goes. Look at the kitchen, it's very dark at the moment. So you just go up. You can't obviously go too far, but it will start lighting the kitchen a little bit up. Plus again, intensity to the left. See, everything is instant, real time. And, and that's that's very nice. And that's just, uh, it's nice to work in actually. I quite enjoy it actually. So there you go. So, you know, you keep placing this and then of course you can still go on still go overall and change um, the overall lighting exposure again. Let me just go up a little bit more. You know, that's just a quick one. There you go. And what I want to show you is before, you remember the kitchen is very dark. You know, we got this um, material. That's another thing. Let me get a material, a very simple material. Let me go and get plastic, just something whitish. Maybe not plastic. Uh, what did I want to do? Um, maybe I do have a light wood. Let's have a look. Mm. Well, you know what? It's white for now. It's probably not what I want, but let's move this here. And what I want to see is the difference it makes already. I haven't changed any light at all, but obviously it will, you know, make a difference. So that's what I think with the client. If you sit here. On the screen you know when you've done everything it looks very pretty and the client comes in and then you start changing stuff like this i think this is this is quite nice um yeah just just do it that way mm -hmm. there you go it just gives you a total different feel of the kitchen um let's make this as example a concrete um, yeah Sorry, how about emulating yeah, yeah. natural lighting per the ARCHICAD model, which I think relates to the same comment that uh, Tim said, uh, that it's hard to actually place down lights in a ceiling. So from what I uh, remember a long time ago doing similar things, um, you basically want to um, 
if you want to be able to turn off the lights in the ceiling uh, and replace them with twin motion ones, you know, you can selectively turn off the Archicad ones and uh, but place the new ones in the same position as the lighting instrument. Um, so if you have the lights in Archicad that were casting light, are you able to turn off the effect of them but leave the um, uh, but leave the instrument, you know, like the downlight cylinder? Yeah, yeah, good question. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, have a quick look. That, that, that was just right here. Let me zoom in. All right, let me turn the lights on. Yes. Oh, that was lucky. Look at how many lights. That's the one. Well, I'll take it. So this is one of the lights. That's the other one. So if I click here, let me move it down. So that's converted to a spotlight. And then you got the other extra light, which is this one. Let me move that down too. Okay, so if that turn off and the actual light physical object is still there. It's, it's really good because, you know, everything is already in place. It's up to you what to do with it. Let me undo this step. Okay, so I could turn that off or on. And which one is the spot? Yeah, this is the spotlight because now, actually, no matter to show this better, let me turn off those. So that's the only spotlight I have now. And it's very easy to now select this. And you see I've got all the settings down here. So okay. you can change the angle of the spotlight. So it looks like you can either adjust the lighting that came in from Archicad or yes. you can turn off the light, uh, the actual light effect from Archicad, place a new twin motion based light and uh, adjust they it. Are, they are converted to twin, that's already twin motion lights now. Oh, I see. Okay. Don't need, don't need to place one. All right. So they do come in. So, so if you think about Archicad, and I'll just say this as a general tip, Archicad has both general light sources, which are, you know, like creating light in its internal renderer, and there are lighting instruments like down lights, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, recessed lights, or table lamps, or street lamps, etc. So there are physical instruments that we associate with light. If you turn them on, there's light coming from them, and then there's the actual light effect. And when they're exported into a rendering program like Twin Motion, it'll bring both. It'll bring the physical geometry and the light. Now in Twin Motion, you can actually go leave a light in the same place, but just adjust its effects. And I and I know you haven't demonstrated it, but you can select multiple lights um, and say, hey, I want all of these lights in this area. I want to make them brighter or dimmer, change yes. the... Yes, all yes. Yes, I can. Let me, let me do that quickly. Let me just... Um... So... Uh, it's probably because yeah, okay. Because they're two different lights, I need I needed to I can't select. If I select those two, they're two different lights. One is a spotlight, one is a uh, which one is that one? Yeah, it's a normal light. So you would have to go see. There's a little icon that's a spotlight. So you would have to hold Control on. I'm on a PC here, and I just select all the spotlights. And now obviously you can see the intensity goes together. You know, you can have the angles different. You can turn on the shadow, by the way. Um, yeah. So, you know, this is interesting. Let me do is this. Is there a way to, um, to save a selection group so you don't have to manually go select uh, those lights? Yes. What I would do is you see, this is in a, this is in a, it's in a folder here. So I would actually let me, do this as a set active container, and then you just go right click again. You need to create a new sub container. So I call them, let me call them spotlights. Okay, uh, let me, hang on a second. You want to take those ones out? It's probably easier for now. And I got to find my, um, Oh, there, yeah, let me take that out too. And I close. So it's a bit getting used to it. There you go. 
Mm -hmm. So ultimately, you can you can um, reorganize the hierarchy to be able to select related yeah. elements together, and and this is retained when you have an updated uh, export from uh, the, from the Archicad model. That's a good question. I hope so. In the earlier version, it wasn't. Shall I give it a go? Okay. <laughs> well, all right. So that's a might that's well, an might well. Well. Then we have a minus well. You know, if it uh, if it stays in those folders. Um, what, uh, one thing, uh, if you if you are going to test it, just move a couple of the lights or add a couple of new lights. Um, uh, or oh, any, new, any new lights you add will be fine. It's more like the lights that, that I had in ArchiCAD that they maybe jump out of this folder again. Right. Nothing happens to them. Okay, so they're... This, uh, Let's have a look. Oh, they fixed that. That's pretty pretty impressive. They stay in the folder. I love it. Perfect. Because in the older version, it just jumped out again. So that's cool. That's excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So that answers, I think, the question about emulating lighting in the marquee head model. Basically, it comes across, and you can then just use those lights if they are. If you want to say, what if we had stronger down lights? How would it look? You know. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. See, this is just one light here, so let, let's put the intensity up. You know, okay. you can see this is obviously burning out, so you wouldn't do that. But let me change the angle. Right. And now so, uh, you go down again. So some people are saying it's getting late for them because in the UK it's in the mid evening. Um, so Tim. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, th Tim, thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, Caroline thanking you for the presentation and for making the course um, offer today. Okay, um, well, so we, we, we certainly are available to stay for a little longer for those of you who are not needing to run off. Um, do feel free to go, give your thanks or you know comments like, did you learn something? Do you feel that you are now more ready to tackle twin motion? Um, as well as any questions, you know, and you know, within reason, Carson will will try to give you some advice. Um, let's see. Uh, Rick Pratt says, "Do you have settings to make a nice, sketchy-looking rendering? The standard twin motion filters are kind of blobby." Yes, they are. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's right. Let me go out here. They, they are not, I agree. I agree. They're not very good. I don't know. I don't know why they even have them, those ones, like you just mentioned, because it is very annoying. Okay, for this, uh, let me go on the camera here just to have a look. So the visual effects here filters. That's that's not that's what he meant. It's they're terrible. I don't know why they're here for the only ones you might be able to use um are the the line light it adds it adds a tiny bit of a line. This is you see it's too thick, obviously, but it adds a little bit of light to it. So yeah, I have to say this is not very nice. But what I can say is let me let me do this. Let me leave the line light on and I show you something. Because what I would do is for this is I go to camera uh, visual effects and I would do a clay render. Let me turn that on. So clay render is pretty much like a white. It just doesn't make it white. Again, I don't know why they got a blue. I would leave it on white, but they got a blue. So let me change this to white. Okay, let's turn that down a little bit. Okay, then you can just with the reflection play a little bit of reflection. And obviously you can see that it's too bright in there at the moment because of the light. Let me turn that off. What else we got in there? Um, yeah, go back. Image lighting. Okay, so what what I do is a lot of this before for the client give them some white renders because what I think it's nice. There's no no material, so people look just at design. Maybe they just look at design of the furniture. Let me go in here as example. Uh, so, and what what effect is this called? This is called. Um, let me go back. It's a clay effect. It's under the camera settings, and you go to visual effects, um, clay render, 
And what is good is you could actually say, ah, uh, I still want the people. Oh, I don't. This is all Archicad at the moment. Let me let me show you. Let me drop in a character. Yeah. Or actually, you know what? A group. Let me take those. It doesn't really matter. Just put something in. So you see at the moment they're white too, but you got the option which is quite nice. You can actually go to the player render and here say I want the people characters still in color as example. I mean it's just an example, you know. So you can work around with this a little bit. Um, again, it depends on the light setting, obviously, but I, I have done some really nice effects with it. Let me show you if I can. You, you can keep asking me. I'm just looking for a nice white render I have here to show you what I mean. Um, no questions. That's pretty oh, no, good. No, no, there are. I've been waiting. So there, uh, one question about the course is, is it self-paced? Yes, so it is. Yeah, yeah, access 12 months, you can go on your own pace. That's correct, yes. Okay. Do you provide any live coaching or any live meetings? Not yet. That's on okay. the card. But okay. I look if if you don't overdo it, I'm happy if you if you do the course to so send me some emails, I'll answer them. You know, that's not a problem. All right, just quickly see that's that's a white render now. Clay, that's clay render. And, and I think it's great for, for, for clients to see the without colors first. Um, while you maybe keep going, I'm, let me try if I can open this file. Okay. Um, now there's a question from Kevin Cabral. Why not use the latest version? I'm not quite sure what, what you're um, asking, Kevin. I, I, are you not using the latest oh, yeah, version? Yeah, I, I, I can answer, I can answer, I can answer. The latest version is the preview version. And I'm not sure why they call it preview because it's a beta version. Beta versions are not officially released, and I highly recommend not to use it for project work that is uh, important to you. Because there will be bugs, it will crash on you at any time. It can even be that bad that you don't open the, the file anymore. I, I've so seen it in forums. Using, so you're using the latest of, uh, official version, it's 2024. Yeah. I have this in the course, I explained this to at the very start, which version I recommend to use for now. It's all in the course because I think that's quite important. There's too many users out there. It is nice to use the latest version. I have a tool and I, I, I play around, but I would never use this for, for if I have a deadline for the client. So that, that's all I can say. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Danielle asked, looking at using a VR headset, a friend of ours uses Enscape with Bimx easily. Does that work with twin motion? VR headset. Yes, it, it does work, but like I said, I have no experience. So I have to say um, I'm not sure how, but I know it works. And if you just look online a little bit of research, uh, even on the Twin Motion side, um, there, there's plenty of information about it. But yeah, unfortunately, I, I haven't used it, so can't so, tell you much about it. Um, Peter Tui is an architect in the Maryland, uh, you know, Baltimore, Maryland area. Um, and uh, we, he and I co-produced a course on twin motion, was it three years ago, I think. Um, one of the things he does is uh, he uses VR goggles with, our, uh, with clients all the time and, uh, you know, just finds that it's really uh, makes a big difference for them understanding the space. For all of us who are trained in 3D design, I mean, just as an architect or designer, or as a specialist, you know, you understand what's going on in the space, but your clients are looking at a flat image on a TV screen, um, and yes. they don't quite get it. But once you put on yes. the goggles, it really makes a huge difference. Now, one of the things that Peter told me is that the um, it's only compatible at the moment, and as far as I know, with PCs, that the Apple connection, even though you can do various things to emulate a PC, doesn't work right so i i don't know if that's changed in recent times but um i'm sure at some point apple will <laughs> will support it but um that is an issue and so he is a mac user who has bought a pc specifically to run twin motion with vr goggles for his clients you know so 
yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's great feedback because I think I look. I agree. It, it, I'm sure it is great for clients that. Yeah, seeing images is great, but but VR is obviously a lot better. So I, it's good feedback. It's good to know that he's happy with it and that it works well. Yeah. Um, there's a question from Wandera Caleb saying, sometimes on importing the model, it comes in all black. What do you do about that? So have you ever experienced this all black when what would be the cause? No, I haven't experienced this. Uh, is it import like an like an FBX import or, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, a real import is like a different model, not from RQK? Uh, I don't know. It says sometimes it comes through. My guess as a, an expert on things is sometimes your viewpoint could be buried in a wall. You know, that would be one thing I've seen, you know, like your camera is inside an object um, and it didn't come through properly. So you might move around and see whether it opens up. Another thing is you could have the lighting settings have messed up and try raising the lighting. Like just like you said, this is rather dark, and all of a sudden, wow, now it's bright. Um, so there may be some settings with the lighting that have gotten, you know, on that import got messed up. Um, and you can also, I would always say, hey, if this this isn't working, let me open another file, see whether the problem is in your software. Like sometimes the software gets messed up, and you need to quit it and reopen it. Um, if you open up another file, does it have the same visual problem or or not? Um, so is it specific to the file and the settings within the file or something else? So those are a few general troubleshooting tips. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Bart from Poland says, can you split one object imported from Archicad into one motion or do you have to change it in Archicad and reload from direct link? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, they're, they're locked in. You can't change any geometry in Twinmotion. It's not okay. like, yeah, like 3D Studio Max or something. That's It's just locked in. Um, yeah, but fortunately that we saw the, the re-import, um, you know, go back to Archicad, make some changes, click the button, and within seconds, things have been updated. So um, that's good. Um, Oh, Tom Palmer says the free version is not necessarily the latest version. So um, I know that Graphisoft had for several years a promotional agreement with Twinmotion, uh, uh, the company that makes Twinmotion, um, to basically promote it to Archicad users, and they would in return give a free license to anyone who's on an Archicad subscription. I believe that expired at some point, maybe uh, the end of 2021 or something. I'm not sure when it was. And so now, even as an Archicad user, if you want to use it professionally, you need to purchase it for a few hundred dollars. Um, do they have a, pre, a free version that you can use for a certain period of time or that you can use, but you're not supposed to use commercially? What yeah, look, I, that's why I opened this quick. So that's on Epic Games. That's where you um, install and download. So if I click here, you can see previous versions. So that's the very latest version, which I said you can play around, but don't use it for commercial uh, projects. So I'm using 2022.2.3. 20, and you can see you also have a trial here. Okay, trial. And the trial version, they, they're almost like a normal version. I, I'd be only, I would have to actually research what, what's different. You might have smaller render outputs. Um, I, think, you know. I think it's lower resolution from what I yeah, recall. You know, but but it's it's fully functional. So yeah, if you're still a bit unsure, you know, yeah, the, download the trial. It's free. Download the plugin, you know, and, and play around. And if you can't get any further, I got the course for you. Okay. Um, so Daniel Wyckoff goes back to the VR output thing. Under image, there is the option for VR output. However, that is PC only. So under the image um, area, let me create an image. Uh, yeah, there format. There was format. Uh, there you go. So that's different sizes and resolutions, tiled rendering. So and all you can do for, I thought for VR you're using panoramas. No, maybe I'm wrong there. 
Uh, All right, well, let's see if Daniel Wyckoff uh, can give us some more direction where to go. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. I would be happy, happy to learn something. That's always yeah, so good. John Chando says, I've been using the latest version. I've had less crashes than the previous version. It is a new UI, so it takes some getting used to. So which version is that, John Chando? Is that a 2023 as opposed to 2022? Um, uh, no. Okay, the very latest version with the new user interface is this one. Again, I added a video already in my course, which explains the new user interface. I okay. might open this quickly, not a problem. It's It looks a little bit different. I like it a lot. And I explained the differences. It's very small. Let me have a quick look. I just opened it now and I can show you. Okay. So it, it, and it's good, like I said, I, and they, they really work. I think they're working very hard. If I compare to Emotion now, so even just 12 months ago, they put massive, massive amount of work in. Um, mm. So they're really, really developing that. Just quickly, yeah, so see this is the new interface now and compared to the other one, let me quit media and let me open this. So all, all of this, so that's new user interface. You still got the library on the left, you got the same one on the right. The new thing is at the very bottom here, this, this is a new little area. If I go back to the old one and um, start my the input, see that's that's way bigger. So so that's different. Let me close the library scene graph. Here you you see it's blue, so I just click on the blue, it will close that. And here, uh, probably so it's all closed. So now it almost looks the same again, but you see there's a lot, you get a lot more space, and I like this because that's almost useless at the moment if I want to do anything. And you got the gizmo items here which are up here now. And there's another couple of little things, but again, I actually quite like the, the new interface. And oh, this is a really cool option they got now on the preferences. The appearance, they actually, depending on your screen resolution, you can actually change the actual resolution of to motion. Let me go 150, it'll look a bit funny, but, but I do it anyway. So you see, it's it's quite big mm -hmm. now. If I open the library, it's massive, you know. But it is it's it's really good because if you got a 4K screen, you can easily move this around. For me, 75 is less than 100, and I get even more space now, you know. So so that's one of the main differences. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there was a question. Um, let's see. Uh, Okay, so Rick Pratt says, uh, have you tried that new version of the interface? Is is uh, completely different. All right, so we just talked about that. Uh, Glenn Berger says, can Twinmotion work on an Intel iMac? Yes, it definitely can work on an Intel-based Mac. It, it's only pretty recently that um, uh, that we've had Mac Silicon. So yes, it does work there. Um, Can I could just quickly add to this, Mac? Just make sure the specification, because you do you do do need a decent video card. It is very important. That that's that's with all rendering software, real time. The video card has to be not the newest, latest one, but it has to be a good one. Um, Paul Ajala or something says, "How about the path tracer tool? What is the path tracer tool?" Okay, look, I'm here at the moment in the roster image. So the path tracer, it's just giving you additional quality. Let me, it's just down here, so I'm clicking on it. So it's calculating the image now, which is more, it it, the, it bounces around the light a lot more accurate. So like, you know, software like V-Ray has done this for forever. So this, and, is, this is a higher quality end result, but yes. it's not, not instant, okay. Yes, exactly. Now you can see it takes a little bit longer now. It's a almost lot, a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, depending on the setting. Obviously, I've got I probably got it on the highs at the moment. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot longer than than other ones. But this is you know this is it is still a nice option to have because it does look better. Let me just undo this. You know, I haven't played with the lights at all, so it's it's a bit deceiving at the moment. Okay, you, you have to obviously make sure that scene looks right before you use path right and with the light. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. So, and I have to say it's only on a PC at the moment. Macintosh, they're waiting for this to be released. 
Um, so Rick Pratt uh, has guidance on the VR option is up by the I, uh, I being EYE. So um, we were looking under image and then it was, uh, there's VR, okay. There you go. So you um, have to connect it, I will think first, there you go, yeah. VR headset and restart, so. Um, yeah, excellent. So actually it seems like VR in this case is going to a headset as opposed to creating a file that you can send like Vimex. Um, so. Yeah, that seems the, seems the case, but you can still send the file to it. You know, you can, with the, that's with the presentation here. I, I'll show you quickly while you're here. Let me do an image. Right. I got an Doug image. Mir, Doug Muir mentions that Mac will participate, I guess, in the VR stuff when their new goggles are available. So I guess uh, there's been rumors that they're working on VR goggles for quite a while. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, right. Brendan Rashid says, does anyone know if Macs are compatible with the VR headsets available? Thought there was an issue. Yes, that's what I've heard is that it, they do not work seamlessly with VR headsets from a Mac, unfortunately. Um, that's, a, that's what I've heard. Um, Francisco says, keyboard navigation is very complicated for me. Is there any way to use the mouse like the 3D connection? Hmm. So are you yeah, using, okay. keyboard, as you've been moving around, have you been using the keyboard or have you been using the mouse to roll in and out and, and move also, around? Also, I actually, this is mainly the mouse. Yeah, I, I don't like keyboards either much. Yeah, this okay. is all mouse. Yeah, all mouse. Sometimes if I, if I turn around like this, I have to hold shift down, you okay. know, but, but otherwise this is just, yeah. And so if this I hold is, down, yeah. So this is uh, basically rolling in and out with the mouse wheel, pressing down the yes. center, mouse button to pan yes, and then right. orbit, with orbiting around you use the shift key with the, the shift, shift shift and click the rolling the rolling you know down yeah there you go so no no keyboard yeah. shortcuts necessary uh if you use use the mouse um you can get around yeah, absolutely. The only ones I use sometimes, like I showed you today, if I if I you know if I click on the chair and I use F to zoom in, you know that sort of thing. Just as a couple of little things. Oh, oh, I toggle for the different views till I'm back. Okay, so um, yeah, o, o toggles O toggles different views like orthogonal, yes. top view, side view, and F is zoom to um, is zoom to a selected element. Yeah, it's all to a selected element is F for friends, just an F. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mute myself because uh, my wife is calling, but I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. Oh, you can maybe hear me. I just quickly did a couple of images. Uh, let me go back. Yeah, okay. So, what I want to do is see you got a presentation here, so I can now add the presentation and click to add media. So I can say, oh, let me take those two images and I've got a video. So let me drag this in, that in front, that in back. So that, that's a presentation now. Uh, yeah. So it starts with an image here. If I scroll, nothing happens. As soon as I go to the animation, it starts animating. And then you got the image. So that's a presentation I just created, very simple here. And if I go to output, um, presentation, I can add this presentation. And if I, call, if I start exporting now, this is the same thing as Enscape. So you export, it's an executable file. You can give it to the client and they can move around. Okay. Okay, so you so you can export a file to that they can move around in. That's uh yes, yes, yes. I just explained that here. Yes, actually, I clicked on cloud. Sorry, this is the same thing. Presentation on the cloud or presentation here. So I should have taken this one to be on your uh, computer at home. Use this one. Okay, so so you use the presentation option um, to uh, create that. Okay, excellent. And then yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. client can open it up in its self-contained. 
Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's just like Enscape. You send it to your client and they double click on it and it will open and then you got the option to move around in your in the project. Yes. Right. Okay. A little navigation tip from Rick Pratt. You can scroll with the mouse and use the shift key. It will, will speed up the mouse. So that'll move you faster through the space. Oh, that's that's something very good. Actually, I do use a lot keys one to six i show you so this is um the speed okay especially if i have a bigger project so just quickly so if you have number one it's really really slow it says insect speed like an ant and um, so you go let, let me do this quickly so at the moment let me hit i hit one on the keyboard and i scroll now you can see i can hardly scroll let me hit two i keep scrolling three four five, I have to go back, and six, you see? So that's all it on the keyboard. It's the same thing as choosing it up here at fly speed, obviously. So if you have very large projects and you want to have a, you know, top view, scroll out quickly, look at this, this is very fast, um, because it's a number six. So that's it, yeah, those, I have to say those keyboard shortcuts, one to six, I do use quite a lot, um, because you can get lost very quickly otherwise. All right. Anybody else? Um, I'm just, uh, uh, Daniel Wyckoff shared a link to a webinar, a recorded presentation by Twinmotion itself uh, that's called Virtual Reality for Architecture with Twinmotion. Um, so I've just uh, replied to his comments, so everybody should be able to see that link, and you can copy it down if you want. So that is um, how long? It's a 38-minute presentation. So I'm sure it'll be interesting. Yeah, that uh, sounds cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so looking at the uh, uh, so there's a comment from James Powers about the black import being black. He said, could it be because it's trying to substitute ARCAD materials with twin motion materials, and there aren't exact replacements available? Hmm. No, I wouldn't think so. It will place definitely not a black black. I mean, you can obviously click on it and see if the material, you know, with the click with the picker on it, you click and have a look on what 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 that shows. If it shows really black, yeah, then it probably is a very black material, I guess. But because I never had it, it's it's hard. It's hard to say. Oh. Now, is there is there an ambient light setting? Uh, yes. Let me go. Um, that that would be the other thing. Um, obviously, if you have no lights in the uh, in it and the ambient light setting is set to zero, you know, then could be all black. So. Oh, would... okay. Yes, that's that's possible. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, block if I turn those off. Uh, Uh, we have some nice thank yous. Rob Hancox, thanks for the fascinating demo, intriguing. Scott Newland, thank you. Karsten, Twinmotion offers some wonderful options to complement ARCHICAD. Yeah, and Tim Ball, it's a very small presentation. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm scrolling back. So, uh, last chance for questions um, or for just comments. You know, please share your, your feelings about. This. Did you find it of interest? Did you learn anything? Um, what, what's your biggest takeaway? Uh, those are things that are always nice to see. Um, and uh, optimal processor and graphics card, that was Tom Marcunis a while back. I guess the basic thing is it'll take advantage of the processor generally, so a better processor will do better and a gra better graphics card as well. Um, Probably it scales reasonably well. So even if you have a somewhat older, somewhat less capable uh, setup, it'll function. It'll just do better the more power you give it. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we've gone through all of those going back. Um, so Daniel Wyckoff said, Try updating to UE5.x. So I don't know what that is. That was way at the beginning when you, you were having some, um, we were talking about the issues loading things. Um, 
Do you know what UE5.x would be? No, I usually have to copy and paste it into my Google search and hopefully... Right. Daniel Wyckoff, if you want to just share, um, if you're still on the call, <laughs> what you meant by that. Um, <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, okay. Um, so Paul Adams is great refresher. Thanks for the YouTube link. Doug Muir, very interesting as always. Kevin Cabral, glow plants work well with tw twin motion. Can you explain what you mean by glow, uh, glow plants? Um, Bart says thank you and best wishes from Poland. Oh, globe plants work well. Um, so uh, glow glow plants. plants. I must say I haven't heard of glow plants. So globe, like a you know a, a globe that you rotate around. A globe plants. Oh, globe, globe. Sorry, yeah, globe, globe, globe. Not globe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. globe, globe. Globe uh, plants. Mm. So I uh, want to be a little more specific, Kevin. Kevin yeah, uh, that is. Mark, by the way, says um, Unreal Engine 5. So that must be UE5. So Unreal Engine 5. Is there a way that you update that or is that part of the twin motion setup? Yeah, look, that's, I think the, the, yes, the latest version is now on, on Unreal Engine 5. Um, yeah, so which is great. Like I said, they keep pushing it forward and I think a lot of um, stuff we see are, is implemented from Unreal Engine actually. It's getting closer and closer together. I mean, there's, there's professionals out there, they actually start into motion. There's a, and there's a plugin now for, for Unreal, you can export to Unreal, open it. And, and it's all there and you keep going. Um, Unreal is just very sophisticated. You know, it's going into direction to a movie, creating movies and stuff and games and all that. So, yeah. So Unreal Engine would be for the tech aficionados. So if you really want to push push the engine. Yes, yes, yes. Um, again, there's a trial version now. You're welcome to download it. And I, I do have a feeling you will see after just two hours how sophisticated it is. I mean, it's a massive learning curve in compared to a twin motion. Right. So twin motion, you know, if we compare it to other solutions on the market, so obviously compared to Archicad's internal engine, like you're in the 3D view, just much more realistic. Uh, mm. The disadvantage yeah. is in Archicad's 3D window, you can draw things, you can create new elements, you can, um, you know, do the stuff that's going to be in your working drawing. So of course, that's the advantage. Yeah. It's it's an integrated process. And yes, you're seeing it in 3D well enough to understand it well enough for your clients to go, okay, I, I got it, but it doesn't look anywhere near as real. Now, um, CineRender in ARCHICAD um, and their new uh, Redshift renderer definitely are better than the 3D window, but from what I can tell, it takes way more time and it's not even as good as what you get in Twin Motion sort of instantly. Um, so I see no reason to use uh, Cine Render, no reason to use um, the re Redshift. You know, prove yeah. me wrong. That's fine. I'm I'm open to that. But, uh, but it's, I, I totally agree. It's 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 an outdated technology. Yeah. It's very now now there are things like Enscape and Lumion. Um, yeah. And how would you compare? uh twin motion to those as well as to the v-ray stuff i don't really understand when you would use one versus the other or how you know are they relatively comparable is enscape relatively comparable to twin motion um yeah exactly i think Ens enscape and lumion are are very similar to twin motion um whereas v-ray is 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 a it's a it's just a very professional tool still for for 3D digital artists, uh, where I work uh, in the animation studio in Sydney, we use V-Ray. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult to explain if you're not into it, obviously, but the quality is, is quite high. I do have to say in motion now with the path rates, it's coming very close to it, but it's also handling a, a lot of a lot of data. Um, we got render access example, you know, that's something in motion can't do. You know, if you have a bigger office and you've got 10 people working on it, you can work in a bit of V-Ray, you can work with 10 people on one project, stuff like that, where motion, yeah, it's pretty much a single user. Okay, now, um, so the, and comparing it to Enscape or Lumion, um, 
Have you used either of those tools? Um, I have Lumi. I used Lumion a bit before to motion. That's very similar. I think Lumion has better planting, I have to say. But better, better landscape elements. Yeah, landscape elements. Yeah, a bit more, bit more, bit more choice. Otherwise, it's very similar. Um, but it costs a lot more money. It's uh, quite expensive compared to Twinmotion. I'm not sure about Enscape. And Enscape again, it's I think Enscape is not as good as Twinmotion and Lumion in in regards to quality and move around. Um, if you One have thing I, I re recall seeing uh, something about Enscape is that you can have the two windows in parallel and you can maneuver within the ARCHICAD environment um, and see in the separate window the Enscape renderer update virtually in real time. Um, that's my impression of it, and I, I'm guessing that if that's the case that you might also be able to draw something in ARCHICAD and have it show up without having to click export. Um, is that possibly true? It's possibly true, yeah, no, that's quite possible. I, I don't know that, but if that's the case, that's obviously very handy. It's a nice feature, yes. Yeah, uh, so if you have two windows or whatever, you can potentially uh, you know, get some workflow efficiency. But this seems like if you're focusing on the materials and lighting, you're focusing on that. When you need to make a change in ARCHICAD, like, hey, I need to split this up because I want to have this part be one type of material, that part be a somewhat different one, you have to go back to ARCHICAD or when you say uh, we need to put in some more downlights because this looks a little too spotty, you go back to ARCHICAD and do that. Um, and it's going to coordinate, of course, with your drawings where your ceiling plan. Um, so, mm, yeah. um, all right, let's see if there are any fi final questions, comments. All right, um, Kevin Cabral says they make them just for twin motion and that was the globe plants. Okay, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I unfortunately don't know. Yes. Okay. Interesting. And Daniel Wyckoff, Twin Motion runs fine on Unreal Engine 5. Um, so, so that you are still on version 4, and at least that's what showed on the splash screen. So, okay, so there's a core technology that uh, apparently you can upgrade and will just give you somewhat better results. Um, all right, by the way, the. Um, Kevin says they use a TMI file, the globe plants. Um, so I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's TMI, okay. Um, Daniel Wyckoff, I run VR on a 2012 Mac Pro running Windows 10 natively, not in emulation, runs fine for an Oculus 2 headset. Okay, well, that's very interesting. So yeah, uh, from, nice. from a technical perspective, Macs with Intel chips, at least, can run either Mac software or Windows software. A common thing to do is to say, hey, I'm a Mac user, but I need to run some software that only runs on PC, so I'll install a tool like Parallels, uh, and I can't remember, there's another one um, maybe that emulates a Windows machine and sort of, so you're running on the Mac, but you can just switch to the window, like you switch to Photoshop, or you switch to um, your email browser or something like that. That will do a lot of things, but it won't be native. It'll be in an emulated window. But you can install Windows in a separate partition on your Mac. So on your drive, you can say, well, this is my Windows area. I'm going to use allocate this much space. And then if you reboot, you can say, hey, I want to boot my Mac software operating system, or I want to boot the Windows. So if you do the um, uh, Windows, if you boot from that, then it is running as a Windows machine. Now, a key difference, and I don't know about what you've got, obviously, Daniel, you're having success with the Oculus 2 headset, is what are the ports that you have um, and how does Windows deal with the ports that the Mac provides? Um, great to hear that the Oculus 2 works on that um, 2012 Mac Pro. Question is, um, would it work? Like, I have a, I just bought a new MacBook Pro literally two weeks ago. Um, love it. Um, I don't really want to put in Windows and, and run that, but if I wanted to, could I? Could I run Windows native and use the USB-C ports? Would it recognize the headset? You know, that's, I'd love to find out. Um, 
Uh, Rick Pratt says, Lumion has just switched to subscription, which is a deal killer for me. Okay, so you don't get it forever. You have to pay every month or every year. Um, okay, Kevin Cabral, the plants that he's talking about are globeplants.com. So globe, like, you know, the earth, plants.com. Um, okay, and by the way, Daniel Wyckoff, related to that old machine, he says he has an upgraded AMD GPU. So he put in a graphics card into the 2012 Mac Pro. So the, the Mac Pros were one of the few uh, Macs in recent years that you can actually upgrade and put in new cards inside the box. Um, and apparently that may be a critical part of why you can use the headset. I'm not sure. All right, glow plants. Okay. Yeah, um, it looks great. It looks great. There's lots and lots. So those ones, yeah, you probably purchase and you'll just import them. That's great. Right. Now it looks like you have to pay for them. Uh, they do have bundles. Like what would a bundle be? Just click on the bundles and let's just see what a typical bundle 47 vertical garden. Okay. So that is $179. So if you're dedicated to, you know, to landscaping, then you might spend money like that and think. Yeah, they look great. They definitely look great. Yeah, and they apparently are native to um, uh, to Twin Motion, or they can be imported as native Twin Motion things. Oh, look, um, there you go, Twin Motion, perfect. Yeah, and says, uh, he, Kevin says, expensive but great bundles of plants just for Twin Motion. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for that. That's a good, good resource, actually. I like that. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, yeah, maybe put that down and share that. That would be good. Yeah, see. All right. Um, there. Okay. All right. Um, Rick Pratt, thank you both. I learned a few things. Good. That's um, right. Good to learn. So, hey, uh, Carson, thank you so much for... Uh, fitting this into your busy schedule and sharing with the Archicad community um, your knowledge and inspiring us. And uh, for those of you who want to go deeper than what we can cover in a free webinar, Carson's course is available. Um, I did post a link earlier. I will send it out by email to everybody on my list, but the discount is only available for a few days. Um, so, you know, if you see this later on, uh, well, you can contact me. I can ask Karsten. Maybe he'll be. That's fine. right. That's right. Let's uh, do that. Yeah. But the link that I, I'm providing right now, he's only setting up for a few days. Um, so uh, uh, awesome. Thanks for sharing this. Um, it's it's great to just see what's possible. And of course, what's possible changes from year to year. So that's uh, right. Yes. Yes. No, thanks for having me. Appreciate it a lot. It's been it's been good, and uh, yeah, I like sharing my my bring knowledge. Up your, bring up your website right now because you'd have in addition to the course, you have some textures, you have some other stuff, right? Uh, look, yeah, let's tell people look. So I do have here my website. So yeah, I got some textures and then a couple of other courses. Let me have a quick look. Um, I've got an ebook as example. That's for people that are a bit more advanced in in. Um, Twin Motion, you know, I called it how to add realism in Twin Motion, just like Miray. So I'm going, it's like a little book, and yeah, just going through it, how you get more out of your um, Twin Motion to make it more, even more realistic. So that's quite and a nice. You mentioned book. the three key system. Is that like yes. a key light, a down light, that sort of thing? Exactly. Yes. 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 So what the three key system is. The first one is the modeling. So you have to have a good model because without a good model, the other two systems like, let's just say you have a bad model and you have great lighting and great textures. Because you have a bad model, it won't look realistic. And, and either of the other three key, key systems, if you have a bad lighting, it does work, or if you have bad textures. So that's why I call the three key systems. Uh -huh. all of the model, key. model, lighting, and texture all working together to create. That's right. That's right, and that's actually that's actually an example. This is rendered in V-Ray at the bottom here, and the top is rendered in Trade Motion, and you won't see a difference to be honest. There's little things, but you can see the quality is pretty much the same if you know what to do. So mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's quite a nice little booklet, and I got another course, interior course. That's more um, focused for people that do interior, um, because yes, you sort of you know, this you have photo montages still. Even today, you need to sometimes use Photoshop and put something in the back. And so that's focused a bit more 
on, on the interior again you know how to make it look nice so that's not a course and i've got some texture as you mentioned that we where do i have there are oh, materials so they're just materials i got them for archicad or i got them for twin motion let's click on archicad and then um, there's just a couple of bundles you know wooden floors all of them let me click on wooden, wooden floors as example and they're all pretty cheap you know a couple of bucks but then um, yeah you can um, add them straight to your rocket can like are you saying is it 4k is that 4k resolution that's correct yes and and then how many in a bundle oh you just have to you click click view and it will show you let me have a look here complete pack oh wooden floor yeah, it says view more details that's so. right they have been on here for a while there you go and i'm sure i have somewhere the what's in it 20 high resolution 4k wooden floor planks so 20 is what it says in the bottom left area yeah but i even have some i even have some individual are uh, complete yeah they're probably in the single ones if you look Okay. All right. So, okay, so your text oh, are, are very inexpensive. Obviously, very, um, very high resolution. Yes, um, they are. You know that sort of is. And like you mentioned, some tutorials. I'm on YouTube. You know, if you ever wonder how do I model anything, it's all on YouTube. But I also have a link on my website. Um, you know, to to my YouTube. Um, yeah, bring up your YouTube, you bring up your YouTube channel so we have a record of that on, on this yes, video. Let me do that quickly. Hang on a second. Uh, yeah, you've got a really good following there, like 12,000 subscribers. Um, yeah, yeah, look, that's, yeah, yeah, that's been good. Let um, me go there. Uh, so Karen says, um, can you provide his website? I cannot see the address for the website that you're showing right now. So what is your um, website? It's um, asmtechbase.com. Can you see up here? Can you see this? Right. Okay. There. I'll, um, I'll just. All right. So asmtechbase.com. Techbase.com. That's right. And this is my YouTube the channel. email that I sent out to everybody about Karsten included a link to that. So yes, YouTube is youtube.com and then slash ASM tech base. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're keen to learn more about modeling, there's lots there. I got over a hundred videos on it now. And you can see I got some playlists, you know facade elevation related roof related outdoor yes there's there's lots there's lots so go and have a look it's all free yeah okay all right well you've done a great job sharing a lot of uh, insights and uh taking the questions gracefully um, oh, thank you thank you I, I interrupted you much more than I thought, but it was because no, that's good. That's good. Like yeah. Good questions, and I could tell that you were, you know, you were work, uh, rolling with it. So, so that's yeah, good. perfect. No, that's been good. Uh, thanks for that. Like I said, appreciate it having me. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks everybody for joining us uh, for the Arcade User Webinar. Um, let me know if you have any questions related to Carson's work or any questions related to ARCHICAD in general. Uh, it's my pleasure to help the ARCHICAD community use these tools more effectively, gain the power that is built into ARCHICAD. Um, you know, I, I just really get excited when I see the results and the light go on in people's eyes, you know, like, oh God, I can do that now. So um, <laughs> I have my own courses. If you aren't familiar with them, you can check out archicadtraining.com um, is my main course. And that is a, you know, let's say a rather comprehensive overview of how to use ARCHICAD effectively. So check that out if you want to go deeper with ARCHICAD as a whole. Carson, thank you so much.
Thanks, Hello. Eric. We'll and be, uh, we'll be talking. Yeah, definitely keep in touch, okay? Great. All right, All right see you. Bye. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody.